I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are gonna leave no dye behind. I have some leftover primary colors. Dharma's Deep Magenta, Caribbean Blue, and Brilliant Yellow Acid Dyes. Now, some of these are residual in some cups. You can see those primary hues right there. Some of it has been combined into this purpley color already. And then even more has been combined to, I don't know if this one's purplish or greenish right there. And so we're gonna have some fun layering these leftover combined colors together in an immersion steam pan on Knit Picks Muse yarn. Muse is a single ply, heavy worsted weight yarn, and it takes up dye so, so beautifully. I wish it had more yardage because for, you know, heavy worsted weight, 114 yards per 100 grams is a little low, but I know that we'll create something gorgeous. And this is also why for the leave no dye behind, I am gonna dye 200 grams of the yarn. So that way there would be enough for a project. Anyway, I am going to prepare the yarn to dye by first well, removing these tags but also I'm gonna add on some removable nylon zip ties. I like to do this even though, say this yarn has three ties on it already, I like to add the zip ties because it's an easy way for me to move the yarn around without accidentally picking it up in a way that could cause tangles. And so also if the yarn does get tangled because of the way I stir, the zip tie is a good place to know, oh, okay, this is where I can untangle it once the yarn is dry. If you would like to learn more about this yarn base or any of the other tools and equipment I use in my videos, check out the links and affiliate links that are down in the video description. I always try to link to the yarn bases and tools that I use in each of my videos so that way it is as easy as possible for you to attempt to replicate my results, which might be a little bit harder when I'm doing a leave no dye behind like this because our dyes are left over from what was in cups, what's at the tip of syringes, and leftovers from when mixing up dye stocks. So that's hard to measure, but by combining these three primary colors, you could end up in, in the same kind of realm as where we're going. Now I want to pre-soak this yarn for at least a little bit in some plain tap water. Ideally, you want your yarn to be wet so that way it can absorb the dye easily. However, there are some reasons why sometimes you may want to start with dry yarn because maybe you don't want the colors to absorb evenly and so having it dry to start with can be helpful there. Uh, the longer you pre-soak your yarn, the more even the soak that you have will be. And so in general, I recommend a pre-soak of at least 30 minutes uh, to get good coverage. But some yarn bases, especially if they're silk content, may need a little bit more time or cotton. Maybe you want to pre-soak overnight just to make sure it's really well saturated. But again, it depends on the overall effect you are going for. So there are certainly times where I will soak the yarn like this and then immediately start dyeing. But I think today we'll do something in between. Really, we'll wait and see how long it takes for me to get the dye bath set up and then we'll get going. For immersion techniques where I want to apply colors in different regions, I like to use my four inch deep catering steam pan. I find that it works really, really nicely. Today for the dye bath, I'm gonna start off with this four cups of purple water that I created from mixing those three primaries as I made stock solutions. And to this, I'm gonna add eight more cups of water by filling up this jar. Here is our water. Getting everything nice and stirred up. And to this, we are gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar. So now we have two tablespoons of vinegar in 12 cups of water. And we're gonna stir this up. And I'm gonna turn on the heat. And I think even though it's been maybe two minutes, <laughs> it really has not been long at all, but we are gonna bring over our yarn and I am going to start adding this in. And oh baby, it does not seem like we have very much color here at all. And also the yarn is not that well saturated yet, but that's okay. That means we will get less even color absorption 
for this first layer of color, which sometimes, as I said, can be fun. It's a fun way to not start off with even color coverage. And oof, this base is really, really fun. But you can see, wow, there's a lot le that looked like a lot of color. There wasn't much color. And you can see that we've pretty much absorbed all of the color into our yarn already. And we are not anywhere near hot yet. I just reduced the heat to low. And we are gonna do things a little bit differently than I thought we might. Uh, because sometimes it's fun to make things up as we go. But I'm gonna set this aside and let's see what this combination that we got from our syringes was. I think that this one, yeah, it's more green. So I'm gonna go rinse out all these syringes and bring back this little amount of color. I didn't really know where I was gonna go. The residual is a little bit purple when we started, but I am intrigued. I am intrigued and oof, I am debating, yeah, let's go for it. I was debating what I wanted to do with the primary colors and how I wanted to layer it on here. But we're gonna first soak up this little bit of some green color that we have. Oh, this is like such a pretty pastel though. Uh, I really, really like it. So now I have to debate if we want to combine our three colors and sort of lean into this pastel thing going on that's very like muted and romantic, or if I want to layer the three colors we have on top of it as more individual. This is what's really fun about filming these leave no die behind videos because sometimes I come in with, okay, I'm just gonna combine everything and I have a feeling that's where we're headed, but I'm gonna combine everything to use it up. Other times I'm like, okay, let's create something more variegated, more multicolored. And seeing how little pigment there was really overall, even though it looked like there was a lot more, has sort of like shifted. I'm enjoying the romance of this color and how tonal it is. And I think that's fun and I sort of want to lean into that a little bit more. So I think I'm going to combine these three colors and we'll do another layer on top of what we have in the pan. But this is what's freeing about having an idea of how you may want to play with color and yarn and a yarn base. And then seeing what the color and the yarn are doing and then just completely changing direction because I think that if we were to layer the pink, blue, and yellow on top of this, we could do it in a way that the colors would combine and we'd see like all these mixtures. It may not feel very rainbow, but it would be really fun. But allowing yourself to enjoy what's happening in your pan and to lean into that is very freeing. And one of the things I love about dyeing yarn in general, not just leave no dye behinds, but something about leave no dye behind has is even more freeing than when I'm filming Dye Pot Weekly and there's like a question that I want to answer for myself. With this series, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to create something and hopefully it'll be beautiful. And usually that's the direction I'm hoping we end up. And I think we will. And it's also fun to just show that you can mix pink, blue, and yellow together and not get brown. You can get brown. But I don't know, and certainly this is a video idea, I need to try to mix a perfect brown from primary colors. That would be a very, that would be kind of challenging maybe. I don't know, I'm not that good with color theory, but I'm learning more. And the more I play and combine colors, the more I learn. So I really do encourage you to go and play around with different colors and play around with layering colors on top of one another. Uh, even if you're playing with watercolors to play with it before you start dyeing yarn. Uh, I think that it's fun. <laughs> right, let's mix these leftovers together. So these started off as our 1% stock solutions I had that held into these containers, but then there was a little bit left, so I put it back in a bottle. So there was just the little bit of liquid, like that much that remained. So not a lot, but these three colors are very, very pigmented. Even our yellow, which yes, we are, we are in the purpley family for sure here today. 
Uh, now I can say that we could have gone more green if we had a bit more of the yellow overall in the proportion, but it looks like when things are more equal, because the blue and pink are more dominant, that's why we end up with purple. Or more dominant, I mean maybe the colors are more intense, pigmented, maybe those are better words. I'm not sure what the correct color theory words, but I do have some triad color mixing of these three colors that is either out already or coming up. But I definitely have done this with uh, jacquard acid dyes and you can see that there as well. And anyway, let's go add this onto our yarn. We are now warm, but definitely not hot. And do I see some blue left in the pan? Maybe. But we are now gonna come with our purple color that's in about four cups of water and pour it on and then just stir this up to add that color on. And what's interesting is I think that that may have been a completely different hue than what we had on here before, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, now I'm gonna heat this up and let it heat for 30 minutes. But we have something incredibly soft Especially considering just how much dye it looked like we had, we really did not have very much at all. But anyway, I'm gonna let this heat for 30 minutes to set the color. You know what, let's just go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar. Won't hurt. <laughs> I do feel some almost green or gray undertones in here and I really, really like it. Uh, it's funny, it might just feel more, more gray once it dries, I don't know. It does always seem like the average of everything you mix is like purple. Um, but, <laughs> since the time is up, I'm now going to go ahead and set this yarn aside to cool so we can wash it. Let's wash this soft and subtle colorway. The soft and subtle colorway. I'm not expecting to see any color bleeding here. Uh, the color that we have is very pastel, very muted, but I think that, you know, even though this is sort of like randomly three primary colors together, it does show that with a limited color palette, even if you have bright colors, you can create something very, very subtle and soft, and that's just a lot of fun. So I didn't see any color bleeding. I am going to rinse out that clear dish soap I just added, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry so we can take a look at the finished yarn. Okay, when I was lifting this up, I saw like a dangling strand and got concerned. Um, but it looks like that the knot where the two ends were tied together, oh, I'm not in focus but it looks like that that is from the knot where the two ends were originally tied together versus being a break in the yarn. So, phew. Here is the finished dry yarn. I came to that loose tie and sort of retied it over here. But I did also want to point out something with single ply yarns. You can notice that the last few inches of this ply that was loose have become fairly lofty. And I don't know if it's the rinsing or even when hanging dry that it lost some of the twist there. And really, this is something that can happen. Even a thick single ply yarn is not as strong as two ply, four ply. Having the, the plies twisted together increases the strength and helps everything sort of stay a little bit better. I call Muse a high twist yarn and there is a lot of twist. The plies are dense and bouncy and in wet at times. The yarn started to kind of curl back on itself because of the twist. But since this is Aran weight yarn versus a single versus fingering, there's less twist per inch than there is when the plies are thinner. And so the yarn may be dense and so we get this color sort of brushing, glazing over the surface of it so beautifully. But there is also like a loftiness to it. And so anyway, I have no idea where I started on this digression, but when you are using single ply yarns, the one thing I would absolutely say is don't use them to seam up a sweater. 
that will get really annoying and you'll have to deal with a lot of breaks. Speaking from experience. I mentioned glazing and what I'm referring to is a really shallow layer of color on the yarn and so if you untwist it a bit you see that there's color just sort of like on that outermost edge. It just barely stuck there and it didn't penetrate very deeply into the yarn. Muse is fantastic for getting this glazed effect because it is dense enough that there is resist from the way that the yarn itself is twisted. I think you might call the undertone in this yarn gray, but because I knew it was there, I see like a hint of green, maybe warm gray. Would that be a yellowish gray? I don't know. It is so much fun that this softness was created with three vibrant primary colors. If I had dyed only 100 grams of yarn, we would have had a color that is deeper than this, clearly. However, because this is a yarn with low yardage and it isn't that thick for having low yardage because it is a nice dense yarn, I'm glad that I dyed 200 grams of it. But yeah, I, I get excited when starting with primaries and I get something that feels so soft uh, versus bold. Don't get me wrong, I love bold colors, but it looked like from those leftovers that there was a lot more dye present than we actually had. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and originally I started off saving any leftover dyes as a cost-saving measure. I didn't want to waste any of my resources, especially when there was still pretty yarn that could come out of those leftovers. And that sentiment still remains. But it also now challenges me artistically. And so I have a lot of fun trying to think, ooh, what can I do that's maybe slightly different than what I've done other times? Or maybe I throw everything together in one pot, which wasn't originally what I thought I would do here, but it is what we ended up doing. And that's okay too. So it's just a lot of fun for me to play around with these extras with less planning. And so it's more on the spot decision making. And I really, really enjoy that. Please make sure you are subscribed, turn on notifications. And if you enjoy my colorful journey, please give the video a thumbs up. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday morning, but we also have bonus content and special weeks and all kinds of fun stuff coming up as well. Thank you so much for watching.